for assignment three, our transformation animation, where we left off, I had sketched out our rough storyboard to show a transformation. And in order to tell a story with images, with two dimensional images, you need three things. You need a character, you need a setting, and you need the illusion of time passing. Even if that setting is completely blank, it's something you want to think about and consider because it helps you tell the story. The character is anything that you tell the story through. So I'm going to choose to tell the story through my fantasy creature from assignment two. As long as you use something that you've designed before as some asset to your animation. So you could animate and transform something completely new, but place it in the setting of the landscape that you created, and then you would meet the requirements. When you think of a transformation, the reason we storyboard it in nine square panels like this is so you think of the beginning to the middle to the end. And the illusion of time passing that happens in sequential panels, here it's like a comic book, in animation happens in a rigid format. So the format's always gonna be the same, whether it's a screen, a movie theater, a phone, uh, an icon square on a Facebook page, right? GIF animations are always locked into a format. So we're gonna use a square format for this. And so you know what you have to deal with. So for my story, I wanna show my creature cracking like an egg and birthing a smaller version of itself, right? So the beginning, the character starts to move and harden, then the crack forms, and then that crack starts to open, and then parts fly like a shell, and the new character emerges and starts to move and grow. And that has an added benefit of setting itself to reset at the beginning. And it's all told in just nine frames, but that doesn't mean that the animation will only need to be nine frames. Our goal for today is to learn how to animate, learn the basics of animation. And a really easy way just to get used to it, especially if it's brand new to you, is to animate your sketches. So this is what's called an animatic. So in order to understand animation as part of compositing, this is our compositing unit, we really need to get used to organizing our sources and our files. And there's a lot that goes into creating a piece of digital artwork. So the first thing I'm going to do is in my master folder here, my digital art folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it okay, organized. I want to make sure everything goes into one folder for this animation. And the first thing is going to be the sketch. I sketch this digitally, but I also want to make sure I save it. And in order to save and organize with animation, we really always want to know where to find things. So I'm going to recommend this process. When you save something, you're going to save it first to the desktop so you can see it physically on your desktop. And then you're going to move it into your folder. So a nice shortcut for moving things into your sketchbook or into your desktop is to just hit Command D when you're on the Save As screen. Command D will automatically re-navigate to the desktop. I want to save it as a JPEG. It's just my sketch. It's only going to be 500 kilobytes. That's why I'm not certain why Photoshop is taking a while to save these things. But then I can see it. There it is, popped up on my desktop. I can move it right into my folder. So this is my rough storyboard sketch. That's actually something I'm going to turn in. So that's what goes into Canvas, you know, under the assignment. That's the first thing you'll turn in. Hopefully, by the end of today, all of you will have that sketch posted. The next step, if we look at this process, is to figure out how to animate. So to turn our sketches into final frames. And to do that, we're going to set up two folders. One we're going to call, and the second folder we're going to call. So 
by having two folders, one which is the animation assets, one which is the animation stage. The animation assets is where we're gonna build our final frames. Think of it like a puppet stage. Let's say this is Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Even though Tim Burton, all he did was do character designs for that and then oversee it, it's an incredible amount of work to animate a stop motion film. And the way they did it was to have not just one puppet for each character, but to have hundreds of puppets for each character, each with little variations, and then hundreds of heads that go on to those puppets with different expressions. And they have to change them all out. So those are called assets. Every padded suitcase that is filled with sculpted heads of Jack Skellington, those are all assets. So we're gonna have a folder for animation assets. The animation stage is when you put all of those things together into one frame, and you have that finished frame that you photograph for the stop motion animation. That's what we call the stage. So this is for finished frames. And that's gonna help us understand. To, to see how it gets animated, we're just going to first animate our storyboard. So let me open up the storyboard with Photoshop. But I can also do this with PhotoP. So I'm going to do I'm going to do it with both programs, right? Just to show you how it's possible, though it's slightly different. So I'm going to go to PhotoP on my browser. You can find it under the course links. And I'm going to open up my sketch in both programs. You only need to do it in one, obviously. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. need theme music for whenever the computer's processing. It's having a lot of trouble. I don't have anything extra open. And I keep stopping recording. So what's going on? Hmm. All right. So by keeping things organized, you can always find your your sources correctly. And so I have it open here in Photoshop and I have it he open here in the browser in PhotoP. You can see how similar they are. Let me drag the ads off because I don't need to advertise to you. So the first thing I'm going to do just to do this rough animation after the, the files have been saved, and they have, I'm going to crop down to just my sketches. I don't need to keep it at high resolution. Now I'm going to make a square box by using the rectangular marquee. And holding shift while I drag. And that's going to give me a perfect square. And because I'm on the, the marquee tool, the selection tool, when I click and drag it, it's going to move the selection. It's not going to cut out my work or move my work. Then I'm going to hit Command J and duplicate that first panel onto its own layer. Okay, let me do that all again in PhotoP. You'll see how similar it is. First, I'm going to crop down to my sketch, use the crop tool. Arrange it just around my storyboard sketch. Hit return. Then I'm going to use the marquee tool and I'm going to hold down shift as I drag and it will give me a perfect square. And I can move that and hit command J to isolate it into a perfect square panel. Okay, let's do that with all the frames. 
So I go back to my background layer and I'm gonna find a perfect square by holding down Shift while I use the Marquee tool and then hit Command-J. It's like internal compositing. We're taking source material from our sketch layer. It's gonna be rough because all my sketches aren't uniform. It's good to see how an animatic works. So I keep going back to the background. I keep hitting Command-J once I've got a, a square around it. Lots of Command-J, lots of duplicating in digital animation. And lots of internal compositing. Because what is the big advantage of digital is it can make perfect copies. Oops, make sure you're on the right layer before you duplicate. Now what's nice is the way it structures the layers, I can go a little bit bigger with this one. It's numbering them for me as I go. From layer one all the way down eventually to layer nine for my nine frames. So layers are different than animation frames, but we create animation frames with layers. All right, so now I've got all nine as squares, but you'll see the squares aren't necessarily the same size. Let's do the same thing here in Photo P. I mean, this is a good time to save it. So file, save as, I'm gonna call this file my animatic. This is just a rough animated sketch. So it's not the sketch storyboard, it's the... In order to save it just as, actually I wanna save it as a, as a Photoshop file. So I have saved that. Make sure it's there. I have saved the animatic as a Photoshop file from, from Photoshop. So I'm gonna put a little tag here, Photoshop, because right now they're identical, Photo P and Photoshop, but once we actually animate, they're gonna diverge a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing here. I know it's tedious, but repetition is how we learn. So I'm going to hold down shift while I make a marquee. And this time, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to try to use the exact same size rectangle each time, the same size selection. So how can I do that? Well, I can take my original one. I can click the magic wand. Oops, I want to be on the on layer one. And then I'm going to select the inverse, select inverse, and it will find that selection for me again that I used for, for, for layer one. Then I go back to my original layer, and I just move that box down through. But each time I hit uh, Command-J, it's going to lose it. So then I go back and I do magic wand and then I do select inverse and then I go back to the background and then I move it and so this is just the difference of instead of drawing a new square each time using the selection I used the first time and you can do this in Photoshop as well Because one thing that animation needs in order to flow is to be fairly uniform. And that requires a lot of technical control. So I'm gonna keep doing that. 